For those of you who don't know Deutsche Telekom IT Solutions, this is a huge company employing loads of people in Hungary, about 4,500 of them. But we are not actually selling anything to the Hungarian market. So all the communication we do is basically employer branding or targeted towards recruitment. Now, when preparing for this presentation, I was thinking about what are the three questions a recruiter should ask from any marketing person or communication person. And I'm sure you're aware of those three questions. Those are, what are your best features? What are your worst features? And how do you see yourself in five years? Now, these are very, very good questions, but they are not fantastically relevant once you have hired that particular marketing person or communication person. Let me suggest another set of questions once that person has been hired. And these three questions are, how much does an application cost for us from the communication perspective? What is the benefit of our brand building communication efforts? And how does each and every open position of ours is actually doing? And these are the three questions any decent marketing communication person should be able to answer if she or he would like to work in the field of employer branding or, or recruitment communication. Now, let's start with the first one. And I will talk about numbers without showing too many of them, because I believe that numbers don't really lie, so we need to do most of the lying. Now, when you talk about numbers in terms of recruitment communication, there are two very important sets of numbers. One, how much we spend on this communication, and the other one, how many CVs, how many applications we receive because of that communication. But not only that, there are other numbers we can measure in that journey. The first one is obviously impression, how many times our advertisement is visible to the target group. The second one is the number of clicks, how many times they interact with our pieces of communication, how many times they click on that. That's the second one. The third one is how many visitors we get out of those clicks, how many visitors we get that actually come to our website. And the last one is how many times the apply button is pushed or how many CVs are uploaded because of that communication. There are the steps that you can measure, there are other things that you can look at, but let's stick to these four ones for, for the time being. Now, if you have the total expenditure and if you have the total number of CVs that you have received during that given time period, with a simple division you can actually figure out how much a CV or an application actually costs for you. Now the fun really begins when you start to slice this data because you actually have an opportunity to figure out by communication channel how much you spent, that you usually know, but also you can figure out how many CVs you have received. And that can actually help you figure out how much CV costs depending on which communication channel you use. And if you have all this data, you can put together a sheet quite similar to this one, where you actually look at how much your total expenditure is, how many applications you have received, and how much an application from that channel actually costs in Hungarian forints, or in lei, or in, a, in, a, in any other currency. Now, when we talk about any other currency, the challenge is that if you use a well-known currency, whatever it may be, then you cannot really share this data with anyone. Because once you show it, then it's going to be on the market. So this is why I'm not showing it to you, which I'm quite okay with, to be honest, and probably you're okay as well. You were not actually expecting any secrets, were you? But the challenge is that if I cannot show this number to anyone, I cannot negotiate about this with any job boards or anyone else where I advertise. And the fun part was what we actually invented was a new currency. We called it ITSH dollars. And what we did, we used an exchange rate, I'm not sharing, to calculate the cost per CV in that particular strange currency that we have. And that, without giving away the information on how much actually a CV costs, we can use when we negotiate with the job boards and we can actually tell them that look, we spent seven times as much with you than with the other guys to get a single CV, so we need to talk about that. I'm not saying they enjoyed this discussion as much as we did, but at least they can be sure now that the discussions were based around the value they were delivering and the money we were spending with them as opposed to having a negotiation that you would have in an open market somewhere. Now, there is another part of communication expenditure that is usually handled in a way that uh, it's very, very easy and very, very simple 
to talk about because everybody assumes when, when you say I'm building a brand, it's something like a Jedi mind trick. I'm building a brand, you're not looking for these droids. So you don't have to ask any more questions. May make sense, may not make sense. We are spending the money because everybody does. Now, I would suggest to look at it some other way. When we say Deutsche Telekom, you probably have met this very important piece of the brand, which is actually the T, which represents the telecom brand across the world. Now, this particular brand is worth 51.1 billion US dollars. That's a huge amount of money. That's a lot of money. So much money, I can't even imagine it. So much money that it's worth a huge applause. If you were here, I would ask, ask you to applaud. And that's about how much sense it actually makes in the real world. It means something, it means a size, but you can't really work with it. it what, how do you relate to this number besides it's really being so big? Now, we did an exciting experiment that one very rarely has an opportunity to do. And that was changing our brand from IT Services Hungary to Deutsche Telekom IT Solutions in July 2020. Now, changing that brand had some major results. And just one of those results is that how many times the apply button was actually pushed during the months. And that's what you see right now. So you see how many times it was pushed in June and how many times it was pushed in July. Again, I'm hiding the data, but honestly, if you look very closely, you will probably see that the second column, the July column, is about twice as high as the June column. Twice as many people applied to Deutsche Telekom IT Solutions than to ITSH, being the very same company advertising the exact same roles. Now, yes, there was some serious issue around COVID already. The market was very different, and we did a fantastic job communicating that. But all that doesn't explain the increase from one day to another. Changing the brand name explains that. And that's all what we were saying. So if you look at the communication we did, we were saying ITSH from now on is known as Deutsche Telekom IT Solutions, and that doubled the number of applications. Now, that's really cool. So what I'm telling you is that if you have a brand name that you actually own, but you don't currently use, well, start using it. Most companies don't have a brand name that is so well known and so well loved. So what you need to do, you need to work on building that brand. But actually, it does make sense. But only if you ask very specific and very strict questions around how do we spend the brand building money and how do we make sure that actually it will support us in the long run and it will result in more applications and better applications in two years. Now, the third question that I think you need to be able to answer is how we are doing on each open position. I'm not sure if you have heard about the statistician who decided to walk across a river that was on average three feet deep. And he drowned because at a certain point it was actually three meters deep, which is too deep. And unfortunately, the statistician couldn't swim. Now, I'm not saying this to celebrate the death of a statistician, although some people may be very happy about that. But I'm actually sharing that to represent the weaknesses of averages. And I think it's especially difficult to talk about averages or to only talk about averages in recruitment communication. And the reason for that is that human beings are not exactly bread or bread rolls. I think it may be obvious, but there are some other implications as well. I come from commercial marketing. And in commercial marketing, if you, let's say, work in an online bakery and you don't sell enough bread, but you sell much more bread rolls, then your management is quite happy because you make the same amount of money, you have similar amount of profit, so all is well. Now, in recruitment, when you actually don't deliver the required number of CVs for a DevOps engineer, but you have three times as many for a junior controller, no one is actually very happy with you. Now, this may be obvious when we talk about that, but when we look at big numbers and average numbers, that can hide these kind of challenges. And what I would suggest to you recruiters is whenever you talk to your communication people, do share that burden with them. Do explain that the hiring managers and recruitment are not doing, not looking for people by piece, but they are actually looking for people to fill very, very specific positions. 
and do demand your communication guys to work on that specific position if that is necessary. So to summarize all three of this, the first one, I think any marketing person should be able to tell you how much an application costs depending on where the application is coming from. The second, you should always question your expenditure on branding, on brand building. You should also always receive a very clear and specific answer on why this particular lay or hoof or euro being spent should serve you in the long run, should deliver more CVs and better CVs in two years. You may need to invent new KPIs to measure that. You may need to look at awareness, you may need to look at likability or intent to apply to have sort, some sort of a forecast on how well you're doing in terms of building your brand, in terms of getting more CVs in two years. But it still needs to be measurable and needs to be very specific. And the third one, do share the burden of your specific needs with your communication guys. Do expect them to work on specific positions, on specific challenges, and getting the right people for all the roles that are currently open with your organization. And all that is possible because I think employer communication and recruitment communication is simply much more than just having a fancy piece of advertising looking for someone to work for you. Thank you. Thank you.